Okay, this is a short video discussing how and why we do adjusting entries in accounting. Okay, now as you probably know so far, you know that the basis of accrual accounting is that we record transactions when they actually occur. So when revenues are earned, when expenses are incurred. This may or may not be the same or different than the cash flow relating to those transactions. So let's take an example. Let's say that in this financial year, you have received, you're a magazine publisher, you've received some revenue in advance. So somebody's paid you for 12 months worth of magazine subscription, but the cash flow has come in on this date. Now, if we were just to look at cash flows, we would say, okay, it's a cash flow that's happened in this financial year, so that total amount would be the revenue for the year. However, with accrual accounting, we basically say, look, it doesn't matter when the cash flow comes in, what matters is when the revenue was earned. So if they've prepaid us for 12 months worth of revenue, then essentially you're earning some of it this year, but some of it you're earning next year when you deliver some more magazines to them. Okay, so let's say for example that they've paid for 12 months, but they've paid for it at the end of the third month of the year. Okay. So what do we need to do at the end of the year? We need to do an adjusting entry depending on how this original cash flow was recorded. So I guess the question we have to ask is, how do you record that cash flow up front? And actually you've got options. So the adjusting entry that you end up doing depends on which option you take. The easiest option is, I guess the most accurate, but nobody actually does it because it's a pain in the neck. So the easiest option is to say, look, the cash has come in, whatever amount that is. Some of it relates to revenue of this period. And if you're asking the question, how much relates to revenue of this period? Well, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine months. So nine twelfths of it is going to be revenue of this period. But the next three months relate to the future. So as far as this period, as far as this year is concerned, we haven't earned that revenue this period. We owe it to somebody. So that's going to be a liability, right? Because this year, this is the year that we're going to be reporting for, we haven't delivered those magazines to those people. So three twelfths of that is going to be a liability when we do the financial statements on this date at the end of the year. Okay, so that's your first option. If you've done that, then everything's correct, so you don't need to do any adjusting entries. Okay, problem is, this is a pain. You need someone who has the skills to think about what revenues are, how they're different from cash flows. Basically, you need a smart person doing this journal entry to do this. In fact, even if the person is smart, it's likely people are gonna make mistakes because this involves a calculation. So the easiest way to deal with this is to say, look, let's tolerate some inaccuracy. Let's record it incorrectly, but then let's fix it up at the end of the year. So let's do something that's incorrect here and fix it up here. Okay, so there's two ways of doing it incorrectly. One way to, is to say, look, the cash has come in and all of it is revenue. Right, we know it's not, but we're being easy. There's no calculations, so there's no opportunity for mistakes. But when we come up to the end of the year, we're going to go back and look over these things, all of these things that have been recorded, to see whether any of them need to be fixed. So we get to the end of the year, we've recorded the full 12 months of revenue, but what do we actually want? Well, we only want nine months of revenue. The remaining three months relates to the next year. So we need to take out the bit that's in the wrong place. So revenue's got too much. It's got 12 months in here, but we only want nine. So we need to take out three. So debit revenue, three months worth, so times three twelfths, and credit liability. Now, if we do that adjusting entry, what's the overall effect? We did this entry when the cash flow came in. We did this adjusting entry at the end of the year. So the total effect, well, the total effect is a debit to cash of X, credit to liability. 
I'm just adding the two entries across, right? The total effect of our journal entries for the year, liability x times 3 twelfths. What's the revenue got? All of x minus 3 twelfths. So the revenue has got 9 twelfths. Exactly the same as if we had recorded it correctly up front. Okay, so essentially what we're getting is we're getting the same effect, but we're doing that with two entries. And the advantage is that there's no complicated calculations on the date of the cash flow. We do all the interesting, complicated stuff looking at transactions on the balance date. All right, well, look, I said there are two possible ways of making mistakes. Let's have a look at the other one. The other way of making a mistake is to say, look, the cash comes in, and we're going to record it all as a liability. You might actually feel more comfortable with this one, right? Because if you think when the cash has come in, hey, we haven't earned any of it. We start earning it the next day. So when it comes in, all 12 months are a liability. Well, okay, that's cool. But we're looking at this from the point of view of the financial statements that we've got to prepare. So when we come to the end of the year, what do we need to say? Well, look, we've already delivered magazines for nine months. We no longer owe people those nine. So there's too much here in the liability. What have we got? We've got 12 months here, but by the time we get to the end of the year, we only want three months in the liability. We still only owe people three months worth of magazines. So let's take out the, 12 month, the nine months that are in the wrong place. So take them out of liability. That's X times nine twelfths. And put them into where? Well, the nine months have been earned. So put them into revenue x times 9 twelfths. Again, what's the effect? Remember, we're doing this entry at balance date to make sure everything's recorded correctly. This at the time the transaction occurs. Well, let's add across and see what the net effect is. Debit cash, that's x. Credit revenue, that's x times 9 twelfths. And credit liability, now I'm adding across, credit X, that's 12 twelfths, debit 9 twelfths, so it's 3 twelfths left. And what have we got? Well, we've got exactly the same thing as we had before. So, we've really got three ways of dealing with these sort of situations. We can record it straight up front, but that can cause problems. It assumes the person doing the transaction is smart enough to work it out. It also means if there's a mistake in these calculations, we have to look all through the year to work out where the mistake might be. But if you do adjusting entries, either of these two ways, then you know that all the fancy calculations are here at the end of the year. They're, it's easier to find errors if they're all on a certain date, because they're all on the same page in the journal, or pretty close to each other. Notice the other thing. What's the overall economic effect? The overall economic effect in this financial year, the financial year we're talking about, is we've earned nine months worth of revenue and got three months worth of liability relating to the future. Well, if we record it correctly, that's what we've got. Nine months worth of revenue, three months of liability. If we record it all as revenue to start off with and we take out the bit that ain't revenue, then we've got three months, sorry, nine months worth of revenue, three months worth of liability. Same as there. If we record it all as liability and at the end of the year take out the bit that isn't, then we've still got nine months worth of revenue, three months of liability. So all of these things give us the same answer. You could do this, but it's uncommon because it's hard to find errors and calculations are spread throughout the financial statements. You could do one of these. And I guess the question is, well, which of these strategies do you choose? Because they both give the same result. Generally, what you're going to find in most accounting textbooks is if the cash flow happens more than once a year, so you know there's there's say a whole bunch of these payments, you're going to use strategy two. So if more than one per year. Why? Because if you've got a whole bunch of these payments, then by the time you make the next payment, the previous one's been already earned or receipt has already been earned. So if you do it this way, most of them will be right. The only one that's going to be funny is the one that you did at the end that partly relates to the next year. 
So the adjustment is going to, just going to be for a small part of a payment. So if that happened frequently, you're probably going to choose option two. But choosing option three isn't wrong. Option two is just more convenient. If they happen once a year or less frequently, then you could still choose option two. Um, but sometimes you choose option three. So you might say, oh, look, I won't go into other ones. But if people pay in advance for a magazine publishing company where you receive subscriptions once a year, either of these would be fine. So long as you make the appropriate correction, your financial statements will be right. So when do you need these adjusting entries? Well, you need the adjusting entries if, and here we've been talking about a revenue liability situation, you need these adjusting entries if the revenue doesn't happen at the same time as the cash flow. Now, most of the revenue did happen at the same time as the cash flow. What do I mean by the same time? As far as accountants are concerned, when they say now, they mean this financial period. So the cash flow happened this financial period. Most of the revenue was earned this financial period. So that should be revenue this financial period. The rest, as far as this period is concerned, is a liability because it's going to turn into revenue in future. Anyway, that's a brief intro into adjusting entries using a revenue received in advance example.